Good afternoon, uh, everyone, and thank you for members of the press for giving us this opportunity to introduce the new board, first of all, of the Bahamas Gulf Federation for the two-year period 2016-2017. Uh, this board would have assumed office officially on the 1st of January uh, 2016 and uh, unfortunately we didn't get the opportunity to introduce ourselves prior to this moment but nonetheless um, we're glad that uh, all who are here present are able to participate. I can first start by introducing myself as Glenn Archer who is the president of the Federation and uh, to my immediate right is the Vice President, Mr. Marvin Bethel. To my left is the Secretary, Ms. Georgette Rule. And I have to beg uh, your indulgence or pardon the absence of uh, our Treasurer, Mr. Kelsey Rule, who is preoccupied with a previous engagement. Uh, continue with the introductions are the directors of the board. Uh, in the blue shirt over here is Mr. Scott McKinsey. Uh, he is also representing one of the dynamic clubs uh, which are all in required, not required, but uh, invited under the constitution to be a member of the board from the poop deck. Also to, further to my right, this is Mr. Samuel Gardner, I think a man who is well known in the community for his role that he's played in the service and in the tourism sector. Also as an educator uh, of well-renowned and some of you might have had the opportunity to experience his teaching. Uh, to his right is Ms. Agatha Delancey, who is the chair for the ladies division of the Bahamas Gulf Federation. And to her right is Ms. Elena Hutchinson, who is now chairing the junior division of the Bahamas Gulf Federation. Again, welcome and thank you all for being here. We sit here today because we are advancing the cause and the pursuits of others who have come before us. And so we are on a road to advance this organization, taking into consideration their vision, um, and also to make sure that whatever we do is done in the best interest of the sport of golf for the community at large. Some of the targets that we find ourselves having to act on is to make sure that we are inspire the interest and participation in the sport that would yield one family and social bonding with discipline, integrity, and respect that the game brings. Two, educational opportunities, both locally and abroad, for those amongst us who are the young people. And we'll be hearing more about junior golfing as we proceed. And three, to create career opportunities, both as playing, both playing and as administrative professionals in the sport. We have a, we are sitting here today too because you will see as the backdrop, we have a facility that we must be able to give thanks uh, to our former president, my, my predecessor, Mr. Craig Flowers, who has been very dedicated to the cause of trying to span golf in the community. And we are grateful for him for his dedication and his efforts that he has done to make this facility that you see here today available to us. We have also for this year uh, established or embar uh, um, sorry, I've established a tournament schedule, uh, which we have now published on our website. Also, we want to make the public aware of a few events which we are committed to 
this year, one first in April, which is the Caribbean Classic Championships. And we are to put a national team forward. And it was the area, the area of the championships deals mainly with the areas of seniors, super seniors and ladies. Uh, the competition which has been specifically now moved to an, to an arena or a forum uh, uh, um, to focus more in, in, in that area. The second one is in July. We are hosting the Caribbean Gulf Championships and also it celebrates the 60th anniversary hmm, of the Caribbean Gulf Association. Nine countries will be participating in both events and as a host country we have quite uh, a large responsibility. We wouldn't get into details here if we have another opportunity to expound on that and uh, also present what the opportunities are for members of the public to, to view it and to be a part of that event. Without further ado, I'm going to give the opportunity for the other members of the board who are charged with their responsibilities and probably starting with the ladies. Um, Ms. Agatha Delancey, she probably may wish to make some comments. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. President. You don't know why you picked on the ladies first, but nonetheless, <laughs> we've been picked upon. Um, certainly, it's a great opportunity to sit here with your new board, uh, ourselves, and to represent the ladies. Over the years, the ladies played an integral role in the overall development of golf. <clears throat> and personally, my personal opinion is that we never got the recognition for our contributions as we ought to have gotten. Uh, Mr. Fred Stubbs is there laughing. <laughs> now, let me tell you why I said that specifically. <clears throat> we often hear about the young lions. I mean, it's deserving. They did a wonderful job. But, you know, on the side of the young lions, coming on their heels, were some young ladies who did a magnificent job. And like the young lions, they too won championships at the CAGC. And those were years back to back, 2003, 2004. And we hear the president speak of this particular property. Well, the acquisition of this property came under the leadership of yours truly when she sat in the chair's president. It was the agitation that we needed a home for junior golf and for Bahamian golfers to have somewhere to hone their skills. And through the agitation of the then minister, Minister Wisdom, we were able to make some inroads. And with the vice president at the time, who was Ke um, Craig Flowers, being the wind beneath the wings of the ladies, we moved forward. Many other persons can lay claim to recognition, or I can lay claim to their role that they played, the late Ken Francis, the late Fred Higgs, and many who were on the journey with the ladies are now gone, females, counterparts. But we do have other ladies now who are willing to move forward. And we find ourselves in a rebranding exercise. Those ladies on whose shoulders I am now sitting, some of them are here today. And here is the Vice Chair Ingrid Black, and we have Director Sharon Clare and Sean Thomas, who all came out to support what it is the President has to say. And so as we move forward, we want to be all inclusive in whatever is being planned for golf in this country, because we have a role to play. This chairman is as energized as she was some 20 years ago. Never mind, never mind those biological years that crept in between. I don't think my commitment to playing the role that I played back then would have changed. But we do know <clears throat> that while we have plans for development programs and to churn out some of the better golfers to participate in Caribbean competition and the local tournaments, we need somewhere to play. And so we need to hear from the government, and maybe the president can speak on behalf 
of what it is he intends to do to get us somewhere to go and play. It's not a social organization, notwithstanding that we are going to be promoting social events. We are, however, looking to develop golfers. And so I, and another one of our officers, who is the secretary to the ladies division, just joined us, Dr. Bridget Roll. There is a dynamic team on the ladies' end. We have programs. We will roll those out at a later date. But we intend to be as cooperative as we can possibly be with the executive body, certainly with the, with the juniors, because now we find ourselves, the ladies are in a unique position of female golfers. When they leave juniors, there is no bridging, there is no place to go. And so questions are now being asked, what are the ladies doing? Well, just give us about another three months and we won't say what we're doing, we will show what we are doing. And so I invite our male counterparts to support us. We need your help. Okay. Okay, thank you for that, uh, Madam Chair. <laughs> Uh, I'm ready to call on Ms. Hutchinson, Elena Hutchinson, uh, to say a few words as to what her role is in uh, leading the junior division. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. President. Um, I'm so happy to be here today and to be the chair of the junior division. Junior golf for me has always been a passion. I've grown up through the BGF uh, junior golf program and I was fortunate enough uh, to play alongside Georgette as well when we were growing up. And both of us were able to go off to college and to compete, and we've played on numerous national teams for the Bahamas. So it's great for me as an LPGA teaching professional to come back and to give back to a sport that's given me so much. As it stands right now with junior golf, we meet primarily twice a week, and we have on the course training as well as um, different sessions that are held here on Saturdays. So that's open to any junior golfer between the age of six to 17. And these programs are very reasonably priced. So basically you can come out and you can learn, you can learn golf for about two hours for around $10. Wow. So I think that's, that's really good. You can't beat that anywhere. And kids, if you're interested, please let your parents know and they can feel free to sign you up. All of our application processes are online. So the easiest way you can contact us directly, it's bgfjuniorgolf at gmail.com. And then we'll be able to answer any questions that you may have coming. Oh yeah. And we also do have a website as well. So it's bahamasgolffederation.com. Coming up for the junior, for the junior division, we have our largest event. It's the junior national championships and that'll be held March 12th and March 13th at Ocean Club. So this is a great event. It's open to all golfers again. Uh, we know that a lot of our better golfers, they'll be playing. They'll be playing 36 holes over the two days, and we'll really, we'll really see how their games are progressing. So it'll be a great event to come out and to watch. So if you're free, times will be posted. You'll be able to see that on our website as well as in the newspaper. And then I want to go ahead and I want to thank our sponsors for the event. Uh, our title sponsor will be Odyssey Aviation. And we'll also have donations by Marcos, Dairy Queen, and let's see, Centerville Food Store. So that's a great event for us. And we look forward to the summer where we'll have a junior team and they'll go away to Jamaica to represent the country and play against other Caribbean countries. So, so far, junior golf is looking really good. We have, I would say, 10 or 15 talented junior golfers. By talented, I mean they can shoot somewhere around, let's say, 85 or below. So they're good. Junior golf is in a great place right now. And I'm just happy to be here and to be a part of this board. Thank you. OK, for the event, we're looking at around maybe 35 to 40 juniors. And the event is reasonable. It's priced at $75. And that's for two days. That includes, that includes all golf course play. They'll receive snacks, water, as well as pizza and fruits. So I think that's a great price and it's a great event.
Thank you, Elena. Uh, very dynamic program we have. I'll say we're sitting here because you see the people here, they are very much committed to the cause. And uh, one of our commitments is we have our heart in it. And one of the things about having your heart in and being committed is you don't have to worry or get into the effort of remembering what you say. <laughs> you just commit yourself and just move ahead and get it done. Um, I'm going to call upon my vice president, Mr. Marvin Bethel, who is really in charge of membership. And he can expound also on some of the developments that have taken place with regards to even this facility, because we committed to getting this facility functioning and operational by the summer. So without further ado, Marvin, Thank you, Mr. Some Thank you, Mr. Us. President. I just want to mention two things. Um, membership. In order for the association to grow, we need our members to support us. And so we're encouraging all former members to renew their membership and persons who were never members before, we want them to join the, the Bahamas Golf Federation. There are a lot of benefits by being a member. Um, some of you may not realize it because we don't have a lot of courses to play on, but we have this facility which <coughs> I'll talk about in, in a minute. But being a member of the Bahamas Golf Federation supports the junior golf program, supports the development of golf for everyone. And I think you, know, you, you almost have a duty to, to support the, the Federation by joining. But in addition to joining, you're allowed to get a handicap. And most of you know, or some of you know, when you go to play tournaments these days, unless you have a verified handicap, um, they let you play off scratch, so you have no chance of winning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, it happened to a couple of people yeah. uh, the other day. But in order to, uh, by being a member of the BGF, you will um, be entered into the GIN handicapping system where you will be allowed to post your scores, and twice per month you will get a report from GIN telling you what your handicap index is. And um, you get that by being a member. Now, I would like to say that people are in the system now who are not members and at some point in time we will de deactivate those persons so you will not be able to get a verified handicap if you're not a member of the uh, Bahamas Gulf Federation so we encourage you to re renew your membership but also uh, being a member gives you certain other privileges in playing at other uh, courses in not only in Nassau uh, the Ocean Club uh, but in Grand Bahama, we have several uh, golf facilities that give our members special rates. We've negotiated special rates in Exuma and uh, both courses in Abaco. So there are privileges, but you know, if you're a golfer, you would want to be a part of the Federation. You would want to support the Federation. So I encourage you to renew your membership and renew it quickly. Second thing I wanted to uh, mention was the, the facility. You can see um, behind us, we've got a range. Um, six months ago, we didn't even have decent uh, mats um, to hit balls off. We were able to get 10. We need to get a few more. We've now, we've now purchased um, a golf cart and ball picker where we can pick up the balls. We're planning to get a ball washer so we can clean the balls. Um, so we can keep this, this facility open. But we have plans to further develop the facility. And what we thought is the Bahamas Golf Federation has so much on its plate we've agreed to appoint a special committee to develop a business plan for the complete development of this facility in consultation with the government. So we've asked um, Justice Neville Adley to head this committee um, and the committee hopes to get started very shortly with a short-term plan to get the course playable. You know, as everybody realizes, many people don't have a place to play. Some people are privileged by being able to play at Ocean Club or Life Aki or Albany, but a lot of people don't have any place to play. So this course is almost ready, uh, but there's still some work to be done. And so our, our objective is to get it open by the end of the second quarter, by the end of um, June, uh, and then put a plan together to completely develop it, put a nice clubhouse. Uh, we're even thinking about the possibility of expanding it to 18 holes, um, if we can get the property but we want to put together a comprehensive master plan to develop this facility, make it something we can all be proud of. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, too. Thank you, too. Well, uh, I hope you've had an opportunity to see the direction we are heading in and uh, also how committed we are. Um, Scott represents one of the clubs and his pledges, I'm sure, you don't mind me calling his club's name, we have the other clubs too, who have pledge to assist us 
But it's important for us to also let you know that the other private Gulf properties have visited this site within the last week. Uh, and they have now come to the point of recognizing the achievement so thus far and are pledged to come in and assist us and as much as they possibly can to get this facility functional as Mr. Bethel has indicated to you. Uh, Mr. Samuel Gardner is the person to a real active and a go-getter and one of the guys who is responsible for pulling this event or uh, this, this effort or this, this occasion together and I'm going to call on him to, to give us a word of thanks uh, and hopefully I'm saying he's going to share some more secrets maybe that uh, <laughs> we haven't yet not divulged. Ladies and gentlemen, first, first I must say how pleased I am to be working with such a dynamic group of individuals. Somehow I feel after listening to the impassioned plea of the lady from the ladies division and also the, the very extensive, clear presentation by the lady from the junior division, I feel a little bit dwarfed with the men. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I feel comforted in the saying behind every great man, there's a great woman. And so hopefully I'm we will fine. get the support of all of these beautiful ladies. And they all eye candies, by the way. <laughs> but nonetheless, I, I, I also want to thank all these guys because we've been meeting day and night trying to think about what we can do and we're all committed to the advancement of this great sport that we all love. It is so addictive. Uh, I want to thank the media. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't get the head honcho uh, Brent Stubbs to hit a couple of balls. <laughs> but I think what happened is his, his, his photographer, who's such a, an expert, uh, <laughs> tried a couple after shooting off his mouth on how good he could hit the ball 300 yards of course he tried uh, several attempts and he didn't make the 100 yards <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't realize that in golf and he played baseball he doesn't realize in baseball you measure distance in feet <laughs> in golf we measure distance in yards and they are three feet and one yard. <laughs> Do the maths. But I also, uh, uh, Mr. President, I'd also like to thank uh, the, a couple of individuals. You always run risk when you call names. But I would certainly like to thank uh, Jim Duncan, who calls himself the swing doctor. We've been able to depend on Jim to fill in the gaps. He's also here day and night. And he's also been very instrumental in the junior program for years. I am one, I used to be a former teacher and so I feel very strongly about the juniors. The future, most of you are, and I can say this because I'm a senior citizen, most of you are washed up. <laughs> okay, take it up with me later, uh, <laughs> Lady Claire. <laughs> Truth be told though, the, the efforts of these juniors, those of us who like the game, we want to see it continue. And so, uh, Ms. Hutchison and all of you who deal with the junior program, I f really feel grateful and we hope that you all will continue to support us. So, uh, I want to say on behalf of us, we're happy that you took the time out to come and we hope that you'll do whatever you could to help us behind the scenes, in front of the scenes, to make this great game of golf a success. We want to reach those heights that we had before and we can only do it with your help. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm. thank you. Uh, I want to personally say thank you too. And just conclude by saying that the facility you do see here today has already been earmarked as a National Golf Academy. So we hope that that is something definitely is going to be achieved and during our tenure and we are really committed to that, that effort. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Any questions? In terms of tournaments and, and the golf courses, how difficult is it, uh, is it for the Federation to, to host the tournament? I know you had that problem in the past, uh, has that been rectified? 
uh, but you're talking about the the, the, the Caribbean, the God properties. Obviously, any event that is hosted by the the country has to involve the the Gulf properties. Uh, thus far, we have always we have been able to get their cooperation and support. We expect that that will continue. And uh, with the hosting of the event in July, we are now endeavoring to establish that. And as I mentioned earlier, as we would progress along, we will call and let the press know and give you updates as to what is happening in that direction. But uh, we've always had the assist, uh, support of the local Gulf uh, properties, and we would expect that situation to continue, and we appreciate it very much, mm, as they have done to date. Mr. President, if I may add too, uh, Brent, the fact that we've, we had all of the Gulf directors here last, last week or so, they did a tour of the facilities, and they have held their promise to help us with, a, with drafting up a short-term plan and also providing of a, us with any materials that they could. They've been very cooperative with us, not as much as we would like, because, you know, we like to play every day. But, of course, they, they have certain restrictions in place uh, to cater for their guests and so forth. But last year or so, we were able to have a four-day tournament that was very cheap and very, very reasonable and a great success. And we also find that sometimes they would even help us by holding fundraising events for us. So we'll keep going behind them to see what more we can get from them. They've done well, but you know, we want the kitchen sink as well. That's right. <laughs> hey, maybe I can give an opportunity to Ms. Georgette Rule, who has really been a tournament coordinator, and she could probably share some more on these lot of events. Um, yes, uh, so on the, um, well, on the schedule for the year, we've got about um, 10 to 12 tournaments so far. Uh, we, uh, um, well, uh, we've got a uh, qualifier for our, uh, um, uh, um, for the Caribbean uh, uh, Golf Championships national team coming up on uh, March 5th and 6th. Uh, there's, um, <clears throat> uh, um, um, and, and then on March 19th and 20th, we've got uh, the Bahamas Masters in our Freeport Grand Bahama. Um, and, uh, um, sorry, um, and then coming up, we've got um, an event at Lyford in July. Uh, we've also got um, the four-day event, which um, Sammy uh, spoke about um, at the various golf courses. That's going to be uh, May, May 25th, 26th, and 27th. Um, so that's Ocean Club, Lyford, Key, and Albany. That's the National Amateur. Um, yes, exactly, the National Amateur. Um, and then we've got our Caribbean Amateur Golf Championships, um, um, well, uh, uh, um, well, later July after the Juniors play. Um, and then we also got the Junior Open. Um, in, in Scotland, that's also mid-July. Uh, we've also um, got the Paradise Island Open, that's in September, the Fred Higgs uh, tournament, uh, that's going to be in October. And then we've got um, two or three others slated um, for November and early, and early December. Um, and so we're definitely looking forward um, to getting more um, tournaments on the schedule, um, which creates more opportunities um, for golfers uh, to compete. Uh, you know, and then gives them, um, I guess, like more inspiration to come out and practice um, and increase our membership for the uh, Federation. Uh, Mr. President, I'd like to talk one more, one more thing I want to say. <laughs> I, want to, I want to stress the point here that the efforts of the BGF are not limited to Nassau. You know, in so many things, all we do, it's Nassau-centric. I, from experience, I can tell you that has been the case. But we are pledged, we've pledged, we've already started. We are including all of the islands where there are golf courses. And on, on any given weekend, you'll find a, a team of guys leaving from here, going to Abaco, going to Grand Bahama, and going to Exumo. And sometimes there are, there are inter-island competition between those islands. So I, I think everybody needs to know that this is not Nassau-centric. The golf. Federation embraces the full Bahamas. One final question for me. Um, how prepared are we for the CHUC as the host? We have already appointed a committee which is working uh, to ensure that all the preparations are in place for that. At the moment, we are establishing the venue, a play which is now very critical. Uh, but that is in motion, and we expect that it, 
but in short order, we should be able to establish exactly where that, where that would be. Uh, the committee, of course, is uh, very wide in scope. Uh, so it involves the BGF, involves the government sector, as well as other members of the private sector who are assisting us in our promotion and sponsorship efforts. The uh, conditions under which we operate are in accordance with the standards and protocols that are also laid out by the Caribbean Gulf Association. And as the host country, hmm, it lays out exactly what our responsibilities are and that's the direction in which we are heading. There's also the possibility of some other uh, video uh, uh, coverage which is also being explored. And as I said, we will be speaking to this more widely in the very near future.